This episode of The Horror Show is brought to you by Eric Whitman, Christian... This is going to be the longest Patreon donation list ever. Eric Whitman, Christian Hogg, Chris Gillian, Manhattan Keller, Kevin Terry, Necro Creep, Kate Saldanez, Aaron Laxon, Joey Guardino, and Michael Reed. Thank you guys so much. Uh, If you're an international Patreon member... Uh, Some of your stickers got held up, but they are out now, Um, so you should be receiving them very, very soon. Uh, This is the second episode of Serial Killer. uh, Movies 4, 5, and 6, they're not streaming anywhere, so go bust out that... Yeah, go bust out that old DVD box set you bought for $350 on Overstock. I, to be truth be told, I, I own the box set. I yeah. paid so much money for yeah. it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was that DVD site? I forget what it was called, but anyway. DVD Talk? Yeah, I don't know. DVD Aficionado? No, no, that was. Did you used to troll those boards. <laughs> I. This is very early Joe trolled there. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> uh, so uh, enjoy or something. Up. Welcome to the horror show with Sean and Joe. Friday the 13th 1, 2, and 3 weren't just hits. They changed cinema forever. And the exponential growth between movies was unfathomable by any standards. But where could they go from here? The arc of Jason Voorhees felt like it was coming to a close. And while producer Frank Mancuso was ready to close that chapter, Jason wasn't quite ready to die. From Bloody Disgusting and The Horror Show, this is Serial Killer. Hello everybody and welcome to The Horror Show, the show that dissects, mutilates, dismembers, and butchers all of your favorite and not so favorite horror movies and other horror related events. I'm Sean. I'm Joe. So, Serial Killer, episode two, movies four, five, and six in Friday the 13th. Yes. People's favorite movies of the series, as we've uh, come to discover. Naturally, one is on there. Like, in the top three, it's like one. Two and three. Three, and then usually a toss-up between, like, some of the four, five, and sixes, and two. There's, uh, I'm gonna tell you right now. There's not a single person in the world that has five on their list. People, there's not. Love, the, it, people love Jason's it. Jason's not even in it. Do you want to know what? <laughs> there's nobody that has that on their top three list. Um, I'm gonna tell you something right now. I'm gonna tell you something right fucking that way. I'm pulling it up. Friday the Thirteenth, Part Five. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. I'm not even saying I agree with it. No, no, no. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm, I'm just saying there's nobody that puts it on their list. Four point eight on IMDb. I, I honestly think that's kind of low. You think that's For low? Part five we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So part well, five we'll was get, so fucking boring. Part five had. Uh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. I honestly I have forgotten to everything. Five. I've forgotten everything. Oh, good. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, you know, we said, we said, uh, in the last episode, it was amazing how they transitioned from Pam to Jason. Jason. Yeah. That's a crazy thing to do. Right. You have this movie franchise and you're going to make a sequel. And instead of just using the killer that made you the money in the first one, you just... Make up this new guy. Yeah. 
Well, that was the plan for this next series of movies. The plan was to swap out Jason again. Which is why five exists. Right. Yes. They were going to do the Halloween 3 because it worked so well for Halloween 3. Terrible. (laughs) Which came out before that. It's the worst idea I've ever seen. (laughs) It's executed poorly and no one wanted it. And I just think it's interesting, though, that they got away with it with Pam. But for whatever reason, Jason was just way more iconic. Maybe well, Pam Pam's, was just like it's the one slasher. Movie. It's one yeah. movie. So a modern day example would be Cloverfield. And then you have Cloverfield, a 10 Cloverfield Lane, right. whatever it's called. Switches up the whole format right, right, and right. it works. I think once they made multiple movies with Jason, you're already sold on the whole Jason idea. Yeah, yeah, so. I guess that's true. Once you yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. Like if, you know, at the any end of part grew, three. Yeah. Any grew. Because he was never dead, apparently. Can we do we want to <laughs> He's fucking dead. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I don't want to I am of the belief that Jason is dead. Yes. And has been dead. Apparently there is a because segment. Because he drowned mm-hmm. in the 50s. Right. Drowned. <laughs> Didn't nearly drown. Didn't almost drown. Right. He fucking drowned. Right. According to everybody, including <laughs> his mother. So I don't really know the argument to him surviving. Right. And why? what would he have done the last? He would have just you know, lived. Right. So even if he wasn't the mutant kid in the lake, right? That's a dream. Sure. Okay, let's say that. Like, that's dream, I can right? concede that, yep. He's a dream. What the fuck was he doing for the last... Because then 2 takes place in the 80s, right? It's real time. Yeah, 2 is real time, so whatever year that came out in. Which so he would have been a full-grown man. Yeah. So and that, during those years, he was just living in the woods. With his mom. Well, no, his mom's dead. Well, uh, okay. So, oh, you're talking no, about... No, I'm saying because uh, the mom thinks yeah, he's I, dead. So, like, the only way this could have happened so, is... Well, so, I'm glad we talked about this. So, the argument is that the mom thinks he's dead, but he's really just not. That's what he'd have to be, right? Because the mom's killing everyone well, for, in his was, honor. I, yeah, that, okay. So, that would honestly make more sense. I'm not okay with it because who would be raising him? Like, that's what I'm saying. That's him. my point. Like, he's out in the woods, like, being like, boy, I wish... I wish I had a mom. You, <laughs> you do. Yeah. In that cabin over exactly. there. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, th- but I, I just assumed the argument was he survived and the mom raised him. Right. But it's just still angry that like oh. something almost happened to him. Yeah, no, I, w- I wouldn't think that. That would be insane. No, th- th- <laughs> they're both very fucking insane because he died. And then why is he never, if he's not, if he's not dead. I mean, the fact, here, why can't he be killed again? Here's, here's the facts. Let's, here's what the real fact is. The real fact is they made one movie and then we're like, oh, we need a character. Uh, so let's just bring Jason back to life. That's fine. That's it. That's, that's fine. That's it. But you just said bring him back to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was fucking dead. Right. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Because in the first on one, the page. yeah, in the first one, they had no, like, the writers were not like, oh, and then he actually escaped into the woods and lived out his life. Because you know what? That's lame. Like, I, I like the fact that it's kind of amb- ambiguous. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what, ha- what? Why is he yeah. back? Where did he come from? Really, you can't just, just be yeah. like he didn't drown because he did. <laughs> because, because I love, dude. There's so much ambiguity in this entire fucking series. Everything is ambiguous. Like almost, well, I shouldn't say everything, but almost like, like the fact that he just starts killing everyone. Yeah, is insane. Like it's just it makes. Well, no that's sense. another thing. Like the whole series is like. You have to be, like the whole mythos is like you have to be naked. Yeah. You have to be partying. No, it almost never all. happens. Not at all. <laughs> Literally, in this, in these next six movies that we cover the next two weeks, he kills more innocent people than probably bad people. <laughs> and also, this will come back in hell next week. Or should I save it? I guess I should save it. Why is Jason evil? In hell, it's like, he's hell's assassin, right? Like, that's kind of like the argument. Because everything after part four is, pure. is dog shit. <laughs> that's why. It's, and they just made things up. So grasping after They're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, he's hell's assassin. But really, he was just a kid. Right, right. So, I mean, that, I mean, technically, that goes back to why is he killed? <laughs> why? Because he's died. <laughs> So that answers the, the whole argument. Super mad. Yeah. Or he's, either that or he's just super mad 
somebody killed his mom, even though he never showed up. Finally shows up to see his mom and she's dead. Well, then, then, then that would have to be he was just living with her this whole time. Because he can't. Uh, uh, this, it's I can do a whole episode on just this theory because to say that he did not. He drowned because they were all partying. People, right. people know that he drowned right. because of the fact that he fucking drowned. Yeah. Like you had to like yeah. pull him out of the water. <laughs> well, I don't think they ever recovered his corpse. I think that's part of the story. Okay. I don't know. It doesn't yeah. matter. It, what, we're, we're talking about a movie where they were like, <laughs> they're like, hey, well, Pam, listen, Pam got her I head chopped off. I would never argue. <laughs> it, I, yeah, I know. I would <laughs> never argue one way or another if somebody, if, if people weren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it up. <laughs> um, all right, so let's let's um, let's start talking about these movies because we've got a bunch. Friday the Thirteenth, the final chapter. Yes. Frank Mancuso is the producer. Joseph Zito, who did the Prowler, oh. is the director. April thirteenth, nineteen eighty four. The budget's two point six million. Makes thirty three fucking million dollars at the box office. Six out of ten on Rotten or on IMDb, twenty five percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Six out of ten. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. And uh, Jason is played by Mr. Ted White. Mm. I loved this Jason. We, we can get into it more. I'm sorry, dude, and everyone. I don't like Kane Hodder's Bill. Kane Hodder's Jason fucking blows. Dude. I don't like it, man. It's so fucking bad. And here's the other thing. So I was gonna give him a pass. On it because when I was I've been thinking about this because I really never liked Kane Hodder's Jason. And I was like maybe it's just me. Then I watched him and I was like I fucking hate Kane Hodder's Jason. So I was like I'll give him a pass. So maybe it's the director. Maybe the director's like act like an asshole. Yeah. The documentary shows that basically whoever played Jason got to make the decisions on how to play him for the most part. And Kane Hodder is very proud. Of the decisions he made with playing Jason. I could not believe it. <laughs> Fucking terrible. Ted White is a dope Jason. Jason 3 and Jason 4 th- are like the pinnacle of Jasons for me. I, I'm, I, the way they move. Four, perfect. The way they yes. move the build of yes. Jason. Yeah, I love Hodder's just a big ock. <laughs> he really is. And he and the way he runs sometimes, the way he's, f- how fast he moves, it just kind of annoys the shit yeah. out of me. Um, <laughs> also, one of... Uh, I'll save it for the next one. Uh, part four. First time we learn that her name is Pamela Voorhees. Because they drive by a grave that says Pamela Voorhees on it. Imagine making like a grave on the side of the road for a mass murderer. A, a fucking murderer. Yeah, no, I was thinking about that too. Because in the next fucking three movies, there's a Jason grave. <laughs> and they also give him his mask. That's <laughs> Like, oh, Jason would have loved to have been buried with his mask. <laughs> fucking kidding me right now? Oh, Christ. Um, we get another recap. Police and ambulances. They start doing that a lot in the movies. I'm glad they don't do that anymore. Oh, my God. What a fucking nightmare. One of these movies, they recap like six fucking I, movies. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's unbelievable. As if it matters. I know. At all. I know. As if somebody is going to the part seven of a movie and be like, well, this is what happened. Like, wait, what? <laughs> Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> imagine going to part seven of a movie and not knowing anything about the series. <laughs> Nobody would do that. Like the guy's name is in it. Jason lives. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The police and ambulances are all there at the site of part three. It picks up literally right where part three ends, which is kind of cool. Um, seven kids and three bikers all dead, but they got them this time. The kills in four are fucking great. They are. Uh, the hacksaw kill right off the the bat. First one, man. Fantastic. Kills the morgue attendant. Number two right after when he literally just guts a fucking nurse. Yep. Yep. What were you going to say? It's, it's at the end. Oh, okay. But well, I'm going to say it because we're talking about kills. Yeah. When, uh. Jason is unmasked and falls in like the machete and it goes through his face yes, slowly. Yes, yes, yes. That might be my favorite kill in the whole series. It's fucking disgusting. It's fucking disgusting. It's an amazing kill. Um, and they said in the documentary, they talk about that kill because they were like, we need to make something that looks 
so fucking brutal that you're like, he's fucking done. Yeah. And I was like, that, that's it, man. Like, that was a fucking solid kill. Um, uh, just a quick uh, yeah. recap for anyone that gives a shit. Friday the 13th Part 1 has 10 total kills. Nine done by Pam, and then Pam yes. herself is yep. a kill. So 10 total kills. Friday Part 2 has 10 total kills. Friday 3 has 12 kills, depending if you count the... Uh, yeah. The unborn, maybe 13. And uh, this one has 13 kills. Yeah. So it's increasing yeah. slowly. The next one... Has 22 fucking kills. Is insane. Jason's not even in it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's that. There's four for you. Um, or five. A lot of classic scenes in four, though. Uh, the you open up to the hitchhiker eating the banana, and Jason just coming out of fucking nowhere. And uh, by the way, Jason was in a hospital in a morgue. He escapes. Um, you get the hitchhiker eating the banana, um, and she takes a knife to the back of the throat, and she squeezes the fucking banana. It's a great scene. Um, anyway, this group of kids. Horny as fuck. They are getting hornier and more is, rowdy. Uh, this one is the most boobiest because there's there's certainly a lot of boobs in this one. This one Skinny was galore. fucking crazy. This one was fucking nuts. And we covered this one on the show. Oh yeah. So <clears throat> you get these horny kids. They're coming up there. Crispin Glover's there. We've already talked about this movie as. Joe what did we do said. that for? Just for fun. We did like a whole episode on this movie. Yeah. Really. Mm-hmm. First year doing it. Um, Seems like forever ago. Yeah, I know. It was a while ago. But yeah, it was either like the first. <laughs> my your computer, computer is hot as fuck, I guess. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, we just did four. We just did it. It's weird. It's just for fun. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was weird. Um, but I think it was because I was like, well, someday we'll do like All of them. one through three and like four. Like four so was like start at four. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like it's harmless to do four. Like. A short recap here on four doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the infamous Crispin Glover one. Yes, this is Crispin Glover dancing the dead fuck. Um, the so I said I said I really like the kills in it. I mean, I don't know. Some of them are good. Some of them are a little bit lackluster for me. Uh, kill three is a classic staple of. The old Jason underneath you stabs through your belly. Yep. But this one's on a raft in the, in the water. Yep. Um, I don't know why. why <laughs> okay. So that's like Jason's MO. Yeah. Is going from like underneath mm-hmm. you and stabbing you. Which is, that's so much more effort for him to just wait on. Nobody can he kill him. He also has to be a fucking ninja to do that. <laughs> Nobody can kill him. He survived three movies already. It's just like a waste of his time and energy to just wait under a bed. He's, just walk in the room and kill him. He's so dramatic. This, yeah. this Jason Voorhees, he's a real fucking drama queen. Everything's got to be perfect. And it gets worse as the movies go on, like how theatrical his kills get. but and Or how nimble he gets. In the Kane Hodder one... He literally just will, like in those ones, he literally just appears in front of, like, you'll see him, you'll run somewhere, this is impossible for him to get in front of you. (laughs) Kill four comes in hot right after the raft scene. Um, Old harpoon gun? The old harpoon gun. A lot of those on Camp Crystal Lake. I've never seen one. I've never seen a harpoon harpoon. gun in my life. I've been on whaling boats. (laughs) I've never seen one in my life. This Jason, though, can get his hands on a harpoon gun like that. Dude, well, I I know we're going to talk about this later. I forget which one it is. It might be the telekinetic one. He's in the fucking middle of the woods, and he pulls out, like, the biggest power tool I've ever seen, which, again, I don't think I've ever seen one in person. And I don't know where you would find it or how, like, that must be so obnoxious to carry with. Kane Hodder talks about it in the documentary. Oh, what ep- what movie is that? Is that the one of the later ones? I think it's Telekinesis. All right, we'll save it. We'll save it then. Okay. But it, it is insane. The weapons, you know, in the first three, <clears throat> there was a very good effort to 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 be like, this is where Jason pulled this weapon from. Like, right. Oh, this is a iron from this or. This is a poker from the fireplace. Very deliberately, like, this is where Jason's getting weapons. From four to six, 
you will start seeing weapons. Yeah. You start to see weapons appear that you're like, what the fuck is that? And why would he ever find that on a camp? There's one that is a giant pole. It looks like it's like one of those like tree branch tree saws, yeah, exactly. but it's not. It's a fucking like ninja blade at the end of it. I know. <laughs> I know. It's one of the most asinine things I've ever and, seen. And their slight defense, I guess, when you're on like part eight of something about a man in a hockey mask, you're just like, I don't fucking care. But you know what? Then move, maybe move away from the camp. Without having to go on a cruise ship to me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. They, they, you, could, you could just move it tried, somewhere dude. else. You could just move it to town. You could move it to a suburb. You could walk to a suburb. You know, people would be pissed. They tried, to, they tried to switch it up at part five. People weren't having it. Well, that's because they erased him from part five. Like, well, they still mentioned him. He's in dreams. <laughs> he is in dreams. And a guy dresses just like him. <laughs> Oh, uh, Jesus Christ. Um, anyway, so there's some good kills there. Um, so much fishing gear, though. So much fishing gear. Uh, he gets another girl with a harpoon later on. You only see the shadows of the kills here. Um, you get a corkscrew to the hand for uh, Crispin. Old Crispin takes the corkscrew to the hand in this one. Um, Finally got screwed. And one of my favorite... God damn it. One of my favorite kills, the girl looking out the window. Jason yes. breaking through. And it's not even the most gory. It's just fucking cool. Because she's like looking out the window. There's a storm out. Jason breaks through the window, just fucking grabs her and tosses her out the fucking yep. window. Like, I don't know. There was still, there's something good about Jason being simple. You know what I mean? Like simple Jason, like not so elaborate, not... <laughs> The, the, uh, that's, telekinetic power. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. The first three work so well because he's just like a menacing figure. Yeah, kind of like, yeah. like the shape in uh, Halloween. Right. You don't have to explain too much. He just walks around and kills you. Yeah. You should not stay around. <laughs> old Jimbo takes a machete to the fucking skull. What did, did, Do we know what that old timey porn they were watching is? I don't know, but why was it during the... Like, there's parts of this movie that do piss me off. And it's mainly Jim sitting there watching this porn being like... <laughs> <laughs> like, halfway crying, halfway laughing, just being like... Huh? Although, in that guy's defense, he said it was the first time he got high. And he actually got high. Oh, it, on, it, on the set? Yeah. He was like, oh, like, I'm high in it. I'm going to try and get high for the first time. And he was like, I just sat there being paranoid. Watching that fucking <laughs> porn? <laughs> While they film you. Nightmare. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> um, we meet Tommy Jarvis in this one, Corey Feldman. Uh, this guy will be an integral role in the next two movies after this. Uh, oh, oh, the character. The character, not Corey Feldman. Uh, <laughs> um, the mask that he's wearing when you first see him. So fucking it's one of my fun. It's so funny. And he just turns around. It's like, what? <laughs> and the mask is so... Because the, the mask is so good. It it's is al- phenomenal. It's almost that you're like, wait, is this guy a character? <laughs> yeah. I, I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, Excuse, is this a monster movie now? <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? Uh, Corey Feldman's great, too, in this. I liked him a lot. Um he was really good. You meet Tommy's sister and a woodsman that shows up who ends up being uh, like a professional Jason Hunter. <laughs> Just odd, but, <laughs> you know, whatever. Not as odd as the bounty hunter and goes to hell, though. So we'll, we'll yeah. catch that out. We'll, we'll catch that one later. Um, yeah. So Tommy, his sister, and this woodsman are basically... Uh, your final people, the camp, the kids in this one are just bait, just straight up. Bait. It's just a vagina mask. Joe's looking at the Tommy Jarvis mask, just like a big alien with a vagina mouth. <laughs> um, so Tommy, his sister and the woodsman, they know something's up. They start visiting the house and they find Jason has murdered everyone. On her way out, she's like, oh, shit. On their way out, they find the woodsman being chopped up by Jason, which, again, Jason only ever does this when he needs when they need to, like, buy time in the movie. <laughs> then all of a sudden, Jason has decided he's going to hack this guy into a million fucking pieces. But you'll see it whenever they need to fucking buy some time. She almost gets got. She ends up escaping. Um, and then 
They find the entryways completely bo- blocked by corpses. Jason has nailed people in doorways. <laughs> Like a fucking, like fucking tape, crime scene tape. Again, I know these movies aren't made to make you think about his actions, right. but why is he doing why, that? Why? Why? It's so unnecessary. He nails Crispin. Go- it would have taken so much work. I I couldn't <laughs> agree more. I think it's exhausting. Did we talk about? I that feel like if your dad time? killed people, that's what he would like make you do. He'd be like, "Come on, Joe, we need to hang this guy up." He'd yeah. be like, "Why?" Because that's what you do, it, Joe. Like that, you maybe snow blow the front yard. In case, in case we needed to get oil, which she filled like the day before. <laughs> um, yeah, ma'am. <laughs> uh, what's the uh, final girl in this one's name? Um, Trish. Trish. Troll Trish Jarvis. Trish and Jason, they have a fight that makes little to no sense. It's just <laughs> fucking insanity. Then Tommy shows up looking more disgusting than Jason. He's shaved his head. He's put on makeup. He is disgusting. It's looking. one of the most dis- horrifying things I've ever seen in my life. I'd much rather see Jason maskless, which we're about to. Um, and he starts saying, remember, remember, Jason, don't you remember? So somehow Tommy Jarvis has... These all these people in the Friday movies take such a gamble with like, hey, I'm gonna mess with this guy's psychological well being. I I know it's all, it's in every single one. And hey, I'm gonna put on his mom's sweater and pray he thinks I'm his mom. And it works every fucking time. It works every fucking time. Tommy Jarvis is like Tommy Jarvis is even more ridiculous. I'm gonna try and make myself look like him as a kid. Which does anyone even remember what he looks like? There's that disgusting Wait. sketch in the newspaper. <laughs> That he was looking at, which it was abysmal. And he's, if he's alive, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> Wait, what? It, I was about to say if he was alive, like, whatever. Also, why? Whatever. I've got no, I've got nothing to say. Anyway. No, yeah, the disgusting sketch in the newspaper. Because he drowned. You, could, you don't have to argue that with me. <laughs> okay, I'm just I, making sure why, why they sketched him in a newspaper. He's dead. <laughs> Boy living. Yeah, boy, almost <laughs> something almost happened, but did it now living alone. <laughs> Doesn't want to see his mom. Uh, I guess that's the whole premise of Harry Potter, isn't it? I suppose it's true. The boy, the boy almost died, whatever. The boy who lived, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> Jason's the original we're, boy. We're who lived. all like, <laughs> isn't that just everybody yes. that's, that's here right now? Yes. Oh my god, like, I can't tell you how many times I was like, wow, almost died. <laughs> We all are the boys that live. Yeah. Boys and girls that live. Well. We are 138. Um, anyway, girl knocks off his masks. So we get to see Jason again. T- Tina brought it up. Cause Tina, Third straight movie. <laughs> yeah, Tina doesn't know we were talking about it. And she was like, after part seven, she's like, you realize we see his face in every single movie? I'm like, yeah, I'm very well aware. And it changes so like, every ridiculous. fucking movie? It gets more and more warped and more and more, like, not not of this earth. I, in Manhattan, he's, like, a half dog, half man. <laughs> or wait, maybe it's this one. Is this the half dog, half man? No, no, this one, no. Oh. This one's just, <laughs> this one's just disgusting. Um, she knocks off his mask. Uh... Oh, yeah, 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 this one. <laughs> Um, she's just a big old egghead. Uh, she gives, she knocks off the mask, giving her the assist for, uh, Tommy to stab Jason through the fucking head. He goes through the side. Yeah. This is my favorite. This might be my gets favorite. to his eye. And Jason right, falls stops. on it. And Jason falls and it goes through his fucking And head. the prosthetics are so good because the other eye is like moving. Yeah. As he's sliding through. Oh and, like, God. Making. It's such a fucking nightmare. Um, Tommy sees his hand. They, Tommy and his sister hug. They embrace. They finally kill Jason, and they see Jason's hand move. And Tommy picks up the fucking machete and just starts wailing on him. Die, 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 die. Um, going ham yeah. on uh, Jason. And you hear the girl be like, "Tommy," which you would never do. You'd be like, "Please, Tommy, chop him up." Keep going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Harder. Um, in the hospital. As always, it ends in the hospital. Tommy visits Trish. 
There's no need for these endings. <laughs> There's absolute. After like the second one, I was like, this is getting exhausting. And it's every single one where it's like a cop being like, whoa, did you see what happened? Can you believe this? Somebody getting loaded into an ambulance being like, where's Jason? And then being like, what's Jason? <laughs> even though everybody in the town knows the story of Jason. <laughs> They're even beginning What's to call him by name. Yeah, they're calling him by name by his name now. By, by the later episodes, there's people being like, "It's not fucking Jason." Part six, the one that everybody loves, like that cop the whole time. I'll save him for then. Anyway, Tommy makes a face at the fucking camera, and that's the end of it. <laughs> uh, I don't hate it. Thirteen. <laughs> I like it less than I liked it when we did it. I remember when we did it, I was like, I love this Friday the 13th. Like it a little bit less. Three is perfect. Four is fucking great. I mean, I have no problem with four, really. Um, I think I think it should have ended after four. Dude, could you imagine, like, the solid franchise? I think it'd be a great it would be, franchise. It would be heralded. Like, there would be no jokes made about Jason. I think it would be fine. One through four, then X. <laughs> that is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what a claim. Uh, part five. New beginning. Directed by Danny Steinman. Produced by Tom. Uh, this fucking Tim guy's D. back. Silver. <laughs> Release date March twenty second, nineteen eighty five. Budget two point two million. Box office twenty one point nine million. So a little dip here. A little little bitty dip here. This yeah. This one did the the poorest. Probably because word of mouth got out that <laughs> you know it's not about. Jason. Um, the next one's pretty bad too. Is it? Yeah. Um, Four point eight on IMDb, sixteen percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Jason is played by Tom Morga. You ever heard of him? You haven't. Fun fact: Who gives a shit? <laughs> Um, this one, they said tons of negotiations between the MPAA and the studio. Which basically, uh, they gave up a ton of sh- shitty deaths for nudity. Um, this director is Danny Steinman. He did Last House on the Left, or no? No, Wes Craven did what, the original Last um, House. Hang on. Let me pull him up real quick. He did something. Oh, they offered him Last House on the Left too, <laughs> if he did this one. But then... Ultimately, we're like, oh, yeah, we can't get the rights to Last House on the Left. <laughs> oh, he did Savage Streets. So he was into cult cinema. He was very much into that weird uh, excessive nudity, excessive violence type of thing. Okay. Um, however, Friday the 13th being massive Hollywood film at this point was like, can't fucking do that. We need an R rating. You know what I mean? Right. And it's 85. Um, Not make it a grindhouse. Right. It can't be grindhouse. Uh, So basically, he was like, well, I like the nudity, so we'll give up some of the more violent deaths to have more nudity, which I didn't really um, notice that much more in this one. I mean, this one one has the most deaths in the series. It does. Uh, I didn't really notice more nudity than part four, because part four had quite a few. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Jarvis is in it. I do know that people in the film, like I didn't watch the documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, I did very little research. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> um, th- some people that were in the film were like, "This was just a porn that this guy directed yes. in the woods." Like, yeah. there's so much unused footage of. Yes. Okay, I did hear that they cut out like they showed the liner notes from like MPAA's like memo, and it was like sex scene too long, sex scene too long, sex scene too long. Yeah. And then it interviewed the guy that fucks the girl in the woods in this movie. And he's like, well, they cut it down, so it made it look like I couldn't last. Oh, shit, that's what people are thinking. Dude, are you fucking <laughs> serious right now? Do you think the girls were like, oh, man, I've, real time sex scene? This I've guy's never so- watched a movie and been like, wow, that person sucks. <laughs> like, come on. There's no, it would do that. No one. No <laughs> one in their right mind. Um, so this movie. Uh, do, 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 do. It's a few years after Jason dies. <laughs> uh, Tommy Jarvis wakes up from a nightmare, watches two grave robbers digging up Jason Voorhees' body. Jason rises from the grave, murders those robbers, and then goes towards Tommy. 
Now, what happens in this one is they've changed Camp Crystal Lake, or yeah, it's now Pinehurst. Pinehurst, yes, which is like a halfway house. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, we should. I wish we could like record Tina in real time while I'm making her watch these movies because her commentary is so great. Because she was just like picking apart why it was being changed, why any of them are even in the halfway house and not locked up. It makes no sense. What? Why is okay? Half of them are just delinquents. It's the and most, then it's Tommy Jarvis who's a lunatic. It's the most unsupervised halfway house of all There's time. Two people running it. So he's about to stab Tommy, who's hiding in the brush. Jason goes up to swing. And you think that's curtains for him. But you're not that lucky. That was my joke. Tommy Jarvis is still with us. Oh, oh gotcha. And an adult. Much older. In the custody of a, the mental health police. <laughs> that he is. And he, he it should have been, honestly, thrown in the secluded room. I mean, they think he murdered people. Right. And they're like, hey, you want to go to this unsupervised camp? <laughs> Dude, the guy that plays him, John Shepard. Yep. Volunteered for months at a mental hospital to play this this role, and he claims he was unaware. He claims he was unaware that it was a Friday the Thirteenth movie until after production. That's he's playing Tommy Jarvis, <laughs> <laughs> and he's fighting a man in a Jason mask, like <laughs> who doesn't talk, doesn't do anything. Um, well, I guess they did hide it. They would hide it under code names. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was called repetition. Yeah. Based on David Bowie. David Bowie. Yeah. Repetition. Yeah. I think so. Isn't that a David Bowie album? I know. Wait, no. Or maybe not an album, but a song. Oh yeah. It's off. It's off lodger. Um, but they were naming them after Bowie songs. Is there a reason behind that? The, the, Person at the, that started that trend just loved David Bowie. So all all the movies were David. There's like three or four of them. They they went did that. Huh. Yeah. Um. So it would be a David Bowie song title name that uh th- that uh they used as the fake name. However, multiple people in the documentary were like, "Yeah, I read it, and it was clearly Friday the 13th. <laughs> like one girl's like, "Yeah, I let my boyfriend read it, and he was like, "This is the next Friday the 13th. He's like, take the role. It's going to be awesome. What is the reasoning behind not just being like, hey, we have a successful the series, and uh, this is the new entry. Do you want to audition for it? Like, just tell them. Super secret. Like, it's not like, like there's awesome. no plot twist. Also, Corey Feldman auditioned for it thinking it was Halloween. <laughs> oh, are you serious? <laughs> and he's like, and then I found it was Friday the 13th. And he's like, I, I was super excited. <laughs> no, you weren't. You wanted to work with Carpenter. I, I mean, um, it certainly helped his career. Do you think it did? This one? It went on the... Go- the wait, the, part five? No, no, no. Four. <laughs> Do you think part <laughs> five helped his career? The three <laughs> seconds he was in it. Oh, yeah, you're right. He went to Goonies. That's why he couldn't do part five was yeah. because he was, like, Spielberg was like, come with me. Yeah, and then he went on to the Burbs, Lost Boys, oh. License to Drive. Everything. So uh, Pinehurst, it's a halfway house. We're introduced to the first cast of... In- this is like the first cast where everybody is just an insane stereotype, yes, caricature, uh, trope. Everybody, it's not at all grounded <laughs> no. in reality whatsoever. Um, and again, they're trying to make a shift, mm-hmm. steer like steer the series in a new direction. Yes. Uh, on a personal level, this is probably my least watched. For sure. In my lifetime, sure. I totally forgot everything and about this. Throughout this whole thing, as I'm watching mm-hmm. it, I'm like, "This sucks." Yeah, it's probably one of my least favorites. After watching the other ones in succession, so close to each other, I kind of appreciate it. I'm with it. I I, I agree with you. It's not. Um, it's not it's offensive. Not so over. It's the not top. offensive. Yeah, if, yeah. I, fine. That's a good word to use. And it opens up with an amazing kill that you do not see coming. This. For a million miles. Uh, they're showing this Pinehurst, kind of giving you a feel for everyone. Um, like I said, everyone's a st- stereotype. So there's this larger gentleman <laughs> who has chocolate all over his face. He's because, you know, you can't, you can't tell he's large 
Unless he had chocolate all over his He's face. Talk- special needs. <laughs> Oh. Well, that makes this even worse, what's about to happen, because all he's doing is talking to this guy who's like, stop talking to me. And he's like, oh, come on, buddy. And he's like, stop talking to me. And he's like, but come on, pal. And then the guy takes a fucking axe to him and fucking slaughters him in front of the entire community. They would probably shut down that halfway house. That's not super They most definitely. Can I skip ahead to the end? <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not Jason. It is the father of Joey. Who was also an orphan. Who was also an orphan. You know that, right? Yes, I do. He's an orphan. The entire beginning is them spelling out like he's an orphan. (laughs) But then his dad is also an EMT or a cop. Uh, He's, He's something. He's a first responder because he shows up, finds Joey dead at the beginning of the movie and he makes a weird face that you're just like, what, what's up with this guy? But it's kind of like maybe he he's like, oh, Jason. or You know what I mean? Like there's, it's a red herring of some type. Yeah, he's the ambulance driver, not the cop. Ambulance yeah. driver. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, but he makes a weird face and you kind of forget about it. And then it's later revealed that he's this guy's dad. And all this guy did, all this guy needed was a fucking parent. <laughs> and all of a sudden his dad's like. Jesus Christ, they kill my kid. I'm going to kill everybody. Right. And he's like the first responder on the scene, and he showed almost no emotion. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Why did he give a shit? How would he even know that that was his kid? They thought he was an orphan. He's just been watching him from like a distance, being like, boy, I wish I was my son. I mean, you know what? I'm not going to get it because you <laughs> Because I'm going to give it to way too much credit. You could be like, oh, he gave it up. He's been keeping tabs because he's unfit to raise him. But that's not what happened. It's not. He's fine. He's got a good job. <laughs> Although, how much do you think he's a first a responder? He's axe murderer. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, I guess, I guess you're surprised. I suppose you're right there. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wait. I went way too far ahead. Okay. Uh, so, we cut to a couple greasers. Oh, do love this movie for introducing the concept of just introducing people for the sake of m- murdering them. <laughs> this is really the one, and it's especially with the kill count, they were just like, hey, why don't we just throw in a couple people and just have them be fucking murdered? Yeah. And it's fucking great. Um, I fucking love it. Although I do think in 2018, people would pan the shit out of this as just like, no, there's no story or whatever. Yeah, and they should. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we get a couple, the first, uh, two we get are a couple greasers, legitimate greasers in 1985. One of them is dressed like Michael Sarah from season three of Twin Peaks. <laughs> like he's got the like leather hat. I, I wish you didn't bring that up. <laughs> well, that's the best character in Twin Peaks. Marlon Bra- no, it's not. Yes, it is. The way he talks. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Joe. Joe. I hate season three. Joe, season three is a masterpiece. And Michael Sarah is brilliant in that role. He's not. Joe, Joe. So he's in two scenes. Oh, my. That's not the road good. is my home. I could do, I could do that. <laughs> I know. Why is, why is that a masterpiece? Because <laughs> fucking. Uh... He served nothing. <laughs> To the plot. It made you laugh. I didn't laugh. <laughs> Hated him. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, these these uh, these old greasers, the car breaks down. So they're pretty bad greasers because they don't know how to fix the fucking car. <laughs> and one of them's like, I got to go take a crap. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine needing to take a shit? <laughs> <laughs> like I'd be like, I'm gonna hold this l- until we fucking find something. I mean, do you know who you're talking to? Yeah, <laughs> I did it on the way here in the woods. Um, well, this guy goes to take a crap. It seems very just like I've got nothing to do, so I'm just gonna shit. <laughs> oh, it's a hobby. I think it's just like he's bored. I'm bored. <laughs> like you fix the car. I've got nothing to do, so I'm just gonna try and shit. <laughs> just see if I got anything. Uh, first kill guy uh, at the car. He gets stabbed in the fucking mouth with a flare. Yeah. Solid. I loved it. Um, his buddy comes back. He gets his throat slit from behind. Two yep. great kids. Uh, Tommy. Cut back to Tommy. He's ripped as fuck. He's, he's fucking ripped. And he's uh, hallucinating about Jason. You see him in the mirror. 
seeing them fucking everywhere. It's fucking annoying. It's not Jason, so who gives a shit? We also meet hillbillies. Real caricatures here. A couple of hillbillies ride up on a motorbike. It's a mom and a son. <laughs> they will serve. It would appear that they're major characters because they get all this time on screen. They're not. They are most definitely not. And they just die later. But <laughs> that's fine. Uh, next kill we get. This is just kill after kill. Yeah. It's fucking. It's. I'm starting to appreciate it. But I think the kills here were less. There's a lot of off-screen killing in this. Did you notice that? There is. Well, because there's 22 of them. <laughs> That's true. But, like, give me, like, 10 crazy ones. Um, couple coked out of their heads at a diner slash gas station. Yep. You know, you can tell cokehead in the 80s because the guy is always ugly as fuck. And the girl's hot. That's the criteria? Yeah, because he's got coke. Okay. He's got blow. Look, go look at 80s movies. Every cokehead couple is one hideous looking motherfucker with a mustache and this hot fucking girl. It's because he got coke, man. It's got the blow. Everyone knew it. Anyway. <laughs> Guy gets an axe to the head. Girl comes back. She takes an axe to the fucking guts. Murder, murder, murder. The mayor and the sheriff get into a fight after that scene. Yeah. Because everyone's dying. <laughs> The mayor's like, what the fuck's going on? And the sheriff's like, I think it's Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because in this movie, Jason is legitimately gone forever. Yes. In his universe, as of this in point. In this universe. Yeah. So it's even funnier that a cop is, like, it's ridiculous in the in the other ones that they're like, Jason's back to life. And people when people are like, that's crazy, he's dead. It's like, okay, yeah. He actually is. That makes sense. In this one, though, it's like, why would this guy even? It's still real world. Why would this guy be like, I think it's this dead guy? Especially like somebody who's supposed to be investigating, like finding. You leads. probably found the body of Jason. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it's Jason. And the mayor. And on the flip his... side, there was a paranormal being that was killing everybody That's that everyone's true. pretty much aware of. <laughs> and the mayor's like, they can't be. Like it, it could. Your town has been in ruins for <laughs> and almost it's a decade. Exact same murders. It's <laughs> yeah. People are just being hacked up. Flares shoved in their mouth. Uh, uh, it's so fucking weird. Actually, this movie is so fucking dumb. Really. Well, yeah. <laughs> also, the, the mayor's argument is he was cream. He was fucking. That is his argument. He's like he was cremated. Also, fun fact: he wasn't, as we learn in part six. Right. <laughs> he was actually buried in the most shallow grave I've. They <laughs> kick the dirt off. They, it, they like sweep. It. I hate parts of Sean. <laughs> I think I actually do too. I think I was like holding it together. I, I don't know. We'll get there. Um. Anyway, we got to get through this because we are running out of time on this one, man. Right. We, we were having a chat. Uh. Let's see where we got. Um. Where should we skip to? Oh well, you know the kids. Uh. You know, two of our kids go out to the woods have sex. Probably one of my favorite kills in this, too, even though you don't get to see a lot. This is the dude that has sex in, like, three seconds. And he's like, hey, be right back. I gotta go. Why do they do that in movies? Why are guys always like, hey, hang on. I'm gonna go wash myself in the river. <laughs> it's like the last thing. I I've never done that. I, would, I don't think I ever would. <laughs> I would never be like, hey, I gotta go wash it up. I'm just like. Even if I hadn't showered, I'm not going in the fucking river. <laughs> no. Um, while he does that, though, uh, girl gets hedge clippered in the fucking eyeballs. Yes, I love that kill. S he fucking through puts it through the eyes squeezes. and then fucking clamp fucking cuts her hey. fucking bridge of her nose. That's fucking awful to think of. Skill. <laughs> uh, also, a lot of strength there. Uh, the boyfriend, he finds her uh, dead body, falls back into a tree where Jason has a belt. Yes, and, and ties it around his head and squeezes it. Until it kills him. Yeah. Well, we get Spider from uh, Return of the Living Dead. Yes, he shows up. Nunes. And this is because Reggie, one of the children. The one from Different Strokes? Is that is he from Different Strokes? He is, according to my wife, which oh. I have no reason to doubt. <laughs> uh, 
Spider's playing literally the exact same character. Yes, he is. He, I, his name's Demon in this one. He might not have even changed his clothes. He might have just walked to the other set. Same year, right? Yeah. 85. Yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah, it's fucking weird. Uh, Spider, well, he gets diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because he has enchiladas. And his girlfriend started... <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> and he goes into the bathroom, and his girlfriend starts singing to him. Can you mad... I don't know how mad I'd be if if I was having, like, f- painful diarrhea, like, in a fucking porta potty and somebody's like, baby, ooh, I do, baby. I have a bathroom in I'd my... i like, shut the fuck up. I have a bathroom in my bedroom, and when I have, like, <laughs> diarrhea, and my wife comes in to, like, look for clothes, like, and hear, like, her footsteps, it honestly pisses me off. <laughs> I need fucking silence. <laughs> Just please leave. Just leave me alone. <laughs> I agree completely. I agree 150%. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Ima- imagine she comes up to the door and starts singing. I would, I would lose my mind. <laughs> I would honestly <laughs> probably get up and just be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, anyway, girl gets got by Jason. She's dead. Uh, Jason stabs the fuck out of the porta potty with a giant pole, which he has found, um, and stabs the fuck out of Spider. Spider gets got in there. Back at Hillbilly Hell House. Little uh, fisticuffs. Little fisticuffs. He gets between the gu- Tommy and the uh, Tommy beats up uh, the, the the Tommy's fighting like choreography is not terrible. It, it, he's yeah, I guess. Anyway, the hillbilly gets hurt and then he runs home on his. Little he bike. hurt me, mom. He hurt me, mama. Just riding his bike around She's a million miles an hour outside her house, just yelling at her. <laughs> She's screaming back, "Come in and eat my stew." <laughs> But then Jason thankfully uh, then cuts Jason off his head. Jason cuts off his fucking head with a... Oh, wait, it's not Jason. Oh, right. Well, we, can call, we can call him Jason. <laughs> uh, he cuts it off with a butcher knife. Then goes after mom, like, and she, she gets the butcher knife to the fucking... How does mom. everybody know Jason's wearing a ho- hockey mask? That's what always cracks me up about it, right? Like, no one... Like, everyone... I don't know, man. It just infuriates me. The whole hockey mask concept pisses me off. Later on, when some guys just got a hockey mask on just for fucking fun, yeah. And why, like they give, they bury him with it? It's it's fucking infuriating. Anyway, break dancing girl gets it. She yeah. gets fucking stabbed. There's so many fucking deaths in this. Um, There's another through the bed kill. Another through the bed kill, and you kind of start piecing together that our hero in this is going to be little Reggie, mm-hmm. little Reggie. Uh, the guy that played Reggie claims that he was covered in the blood of Christ. He was wearing an all red outfit, which is what saved him. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> is this guy serious? <laughs> there were some wild takes on that <laughs> fucking documentary of people really overthinking their characters, but yeah. <laughs> so some of these documentaries are ridiculous. So I'll never forget, I saw one in high school on The Exorcist, and the priest was like, we were in a room that was negative 300 degrees. <laughs> like, it, it, honestly, it was the most absurd number I've ever heard. I remember thinking, like, I was younger. I remember being like, there's no way that's possible. Like, they put you in a room that cold. He's like, that's we were there so for 12 cold. hours a day. Like, no, you weren't. Yeah. So it's basically Reggie and, um, well, Tommy's around, right? Tommy's, Tommy's around. around. <laughs> it's Reggie, Pam, and Tommy. Mm-hmm. Pam being... Is she even a counselor? Who is Pam? Great question. There's too many of them. I'm pretty sure she's a counselor. She is. She was the she's director. She's the director, yeah. I gotta turn off my fucking sound here. Uh, so Pam's the director of the camp. Reggie is survived. And Tommy survived, but Tommy has been kind of MIA. And I forget what's... he. Oh, he runs away, remember? They go out to... After the fight with the hillbilly, he he goes running away. I've totally forgotten something that I need to talk about in this. You're right. Five is fucking terrible. Yeah. Because I forgot how bad the acting was until just now. Yeah, but it gets so much worse. In which one? Six. Okay, maybe. No. Pam is a terrible actress. I agree. 
wholeheartedly. <laughs> I'll save what I have to say for when we get to six. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm mixing them up, but I thought Pam was fucking abysmal. I mean, Pam's pretty bad. Wait, no, maybe it is six. thinking of the cop's daughter? Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe I am thinking about her. She, whoever... (sighs) Oh, don't worry. The documentary has the casting director, and all she does is pat herself on the back for everyone she fucking hired. Well, whoever wrote part six should honestly be embarrassed. Oh, I do. Can we end this one so I can yell Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh... Jason kills a bunch of people. Uh, it's the camp director, Tommy, who's run away because he's like, oh, runs out. So you kind of assume Tommy's actually doing these murders. That's the real red herring. In yeah. This, yep. Is Tommy is Jason, uh, especially at the end of part four. Uh, so it's just Reggie and Pam really fighting for their lives at this point. Sorry. Uh, Reggie finds all the bodies. Pam's like, what are you screaming about? And walks in and is like, oh, my God, we got to run. They run. Uh, not for long, though, because Jason literally teleports constantly in this. He's just appearing everywhere. Um, they run for so fucking long from Jason. Mm-hmm. They get to the cop car, and then Jason's there. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Uh, Reggie's granddad also gets thrown through the window. He's done. His eyes are poked out. Jason has a thing for eyeballs in this. Yeah, he does. And I'm wondering if it's because Tommy took his eye. Well, it's not Jason, so that theory uh, doesn't hold any crap water. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Well, Pam's about to get got. She's she's on her hands and knees. Jason's there. And uh, Killdozer shows up. (laughs) Oh, fucking Killdozer. And Jason just stands there looking at Kill... Which, again, it's not fucking Jason. So, like, yeah, maybe, like, big lumbering idiot Jason might be like, whoa. Right, because like, what's, what's a kill dozer? Like, I don't know what a uh, bulldozer is. <laughs> <laughs> he most definitely doesn't know what a kill dozer is. Uh, he's like, Bull- bulldozer. But this is like a, a cop. Right. A man. Right. Or an ambulance worker, I mean. No, no it's, a, it's a living human. That's been on Earth that has for nothing wrong 40, with yeah. 40 to 50 years and knows what a bulldozer is and knows to get the fuck out of the way. Right. And just run. <laughs> right. It's time to stop imitating Jason and get the fuck out of the, the guy who's never seen do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imitating a guy he's never seen. Yeah, <laughs> to a T. Like Val, you know Val Kilmer's a uh, Mark Twain impersonator. I did, I did not <laughs> <laughs> imitate him to like a T. There's no recordings or anything of him. <laughs> <laughs> so. so uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, they they fucking run over Jason. Actually, they don't. They hit him, and he goes flying 30 feet. Yes, and it's just kind of cut his stomach open a little bit. Um, oh, yeah, no, Pam is the worst. In my note here, Pam is the worst, most annoying actor ever. So I fucking hated her guts. She's always just like, Reggie, Tommy. Well, I agree, but the girl in part six is so much worse. Well, Jason's back up. They're hiding in the barn. Yeah. The, the problem with these, again, like, I, we said we like simple Jason, but it's like the same shit in all of these. It's like, oh, they always end up back in the barn. They always end up in a Jarvis house. It gets a little, you know, Repetitive. exhausting. Isn't that the name of the, this movie? <laughs> Repetitive. Repetition. <laughs> Pam pulls out a chainsaw and somehow can't defeat the fucking machete. <laughs> that, was, that was honestly impressive. And again. On Jason's part. Not a supernatural Jason. Right. It's a man. Right. Imagine if somebody, you had a knife and somebody had a chainsaw and was like coming at you. <laughs> You'd be fucking dead so fast. Um, she gets him with the chainsaw in the arm, but then it runs out of gas. Yep. In walks Tommy. He's not Jason. Jason and Tommy have a little moment. Yeah, they little, do. A little, little stare H to H. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little heart to heart there. Um, but psych, Jason slashes him. And Tommy stabs him in the dick. dick. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, these two fight like fucking idiots for the next few minutes. Like yeah. actual fucking idiots. Like rolling around. Like it's like Yeah, but thankfully uh, down below there's a bed of spikes. Fucking world star hip hop fight. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that is true. There is a bed of spikes. The, you know, the farm equipment. The old st- bed of enormous spikes. <laughs> I can't think of a single purpose. 
anyone could use for that. Other than have somebody fall on. <laughs> it's the old uh, <laughs> untimely death machine. Yeah, that's exactly it's like, what it is. oh, no one got killed by farm equipment today, <laughs> so let's just push somebody on this. <laughs> Unfortunately for Jason, well, it's not Jason. It's him. Roy. Roy. Is an EMT. Yeah. He's killing people because the kid, the orphan at the beginning of the film, was his son. That is true. So and he, then we have a uh, false ending after false ending. The, the endings that are honestly tiring. The endings are so <laughs> tiring. Um, in Tommy's room, he sees Jason standing over him. Tommy's in the hospital again. He sees Jason standing over him, but he disappears. But somehow... Tommy is still carrying around this fucking Jason mask. <laughs> What's more absurd? The Halloween trailer where they show Michael Myers his mask or them being like, hey, Tommy, you want to carry around this Jason mask you've been wearing while you murder people? <laughs> I was probably Michael Myers. <laughs> Remember this? Uh, I'll, never, I'll never get over that. <laughs> Remember me from the first movie? Um, I mean, how is that different than burying Jason with his mask? It's not. Right. Or giving Tommy the mask. Hey, Tommy, you want a souvenir from all the murders that you just experienced? I mean... It's evidence. It's fucking evidence. Uh, agreed. Agreed. <laughs> anyway, uh, Pam goes in, though. Yeah. It turns out, well, the window's broken. I don't know why. I don't know if Jason was real. Was Jason real? It doesn't fucking matter. No, anyway, uh, Tommy is just the window's broken. You think Tommy jumped out like a coffin baby, but he didn't. He's just behind Pam with a knife, and uh, he's about to attack her. And that's it. That's it. What an ending. <laughs> Whatever. What, what a way to end the movie. And then they were like, "Hey, man, let's make a part six. Except By the way. They told the directors of every one of these movies, this is going to be the last one. Right. And they were like, so end it, but also keep it open. Yeah. That's literally what they told the directors who were like, oh, okay. Ridiculous. No, they probably did that. Like if it finally bombed in the box office, you'd be yeah. like, this is it. If it can end it. Right. I mean, that. I mean. Like anyone would give a shit if you just ended after part five. Well, it's, it's kind of like the interesting fact of like Breaking Bad was a success. Like they knew. You know what I mean? After season one or two, like mm -hmm. they were like, oh, this isn't going to go away anytime soon. But yet you had to write every season as it being your last. Right. Like, I, I what's his name? Gillian? Gillian? Uh, what is his name? Vin, uh, Vince, Vince Gillian. Phil, Gill, Gilligan? It sounds sounds. Whatever. It's it fine. Sounds right. Old Vinny. Uh, I listened to an interview with him. He's like, we, you don't write for the next season. You don't do it. You just write that season and then hope you can tie everything together in the end, mm. which is insane because they literally tied every loose end up in that show somehow more than any other show I've like ever seen. But, um, I, I mean, I'm sure they had like an end point that they wanted to reach, but they still have to, I, I know. Yeah. I know, I know yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. Like, but like if it's your last season, you also you have, have to, to be, be able like to tie it up. There. Sa satisfying, somewhat satisfying conclusion to right. the end of it. Although they didn't really do it that well in this bad example. In Breaking Bad? No, it, no, he bent it perfectly. Th this movie with a guy with a knife behind. <laughs> no, that's <was> terrible. <laughs> Straight up a cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, yes, it was. <laughs> Not an ending whatsoever. Uh, Jason Six, our last one here. Ugh, how We're long is this episode? An hour already. Holy although, shit! Although we talked for a little bit at the beginning. Jason Six, Jason Lives, directed by Tom McLaughlin. Uh, produced by Dan Burns, released August 1st, 1986, $3 million budget, box office. This is the only box office number I've seen that showed a range, 17 to 19 million. <laughs> they, they don't know? They're like, eh. <laughs> money changed hands. <laughs> Who's to say? I'd probably lean more closer to the 17 if they did that. Most definitely. <laughs> a 5.9 on IMDb. So... 52 percent on rotten Tomatoes. that is that is i told baffling. you i told you i told you people love this one well are, is that a critic score or, or critics. people that is uh how many critics though uh let's like pull one up. out of three <laughs> no they all had a bunch uh <laughs> it, yeah before you were telling me like this is people's favorite 
yeah. which does not sway my opinion of it. I think it's trash. I will say I can see why people mm-hmm. are partial to it, especially with him not being in part 27 five. reviews, critic reviews, 14 positive. Okay. 13 negative. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's fucking ridiculous. Think about how many good movies you've seen that have like a, a 40% or like a 50%. Well, I mean, let's look at let's look at the first three. Okay. Let's see what they got again because I can't remember. Um, The first one on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. It's got 61%. Fair. Okay. Part two, 34%. Yeah, that is ridiculous. <laughs> Part three, 12%. Which to me, like, I mean, part three, I mean, it's not like a cinematic masterpiece, but it's it's a great Friday the 13th installment. And then this one's got a 52%. Things part six has. A paintball scene. Oh, my God. That, I mean, that was unbelievable. Jason coming out in the opening credits to a James Bond. Oh, yeah. I wrote that. That is... <laughs> That's unreal. Things that are said in this movie. Does he think I'm a fart head? <laughs> you little turd. <laughs> what are you doing back there? Taking a dump? Those are fucking lines from this movie. How can any critic give this a high score? <laughs> Three Alice Cooper tracks, maybe that swayed him. I mean... <laughs> There are three Alice Cooper tracks. Big Alice Cooper fans. I, well, I mean, this, I'm done. That's all I have to say. Let's kick it off. Tommy is back. Not for long. He's back. And there's no resolution to the end of part five. <laughs> well, Tommy's, uh, he, he's, he's escaped the institution again with a pal. And um, he's saying he's got to send Jason to hell. Yeah. Jason's dead, by the way. He, he, he's also cremated. <laughs> Turns out he's not. But he's not. So they go to his grave where there is nothing left of Jason. Literally nothing less. It's dust. It's Also, he was cremated. Well, no, but I mean, <laughs> barely. <laughs> There's n- barely anything there. It's you can't even tell it's a human. And Tommy's like, I gotta fucking kill him. Tommy, he's fucking dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he hasn't been terrorizing you. Right. Because he's fucking dead. <laughs> right. In fact, Tommy, you were the sole reason everything is about to happen. Anyway, Tommy uh, stabs him with a pole. It gets struck by lightning and somehow reanimates a pole. <laughs> Wait, why do people like this? Do you realize what would happen if they did this? Today? Yeah. Like the new Michael Myers, like the like, new Halloween? Right. Oh, no. Actually, Michael's dead, and we reanimated a pile of dust because Jamie Lee was like, I got to go make sure he's dead. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It would be lambasted. <laughs> I got to go. go make sure he's dead. That's yeah. the reason. He's fucking dead. He hasn't bothered you in years. Idiot. Jason's alive. Jacked as ever. He is Jack. Rips out Tommy's friend's heart by punching a hole through him. Like his face and his mask, like the mask doesn't fit right and his face is shrunken. <laughs> Head's engorged. Um, Tommy gets away, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and Jason gets his mask back because um, Tommy brought it, I think. Tommy had the mask. Mm-hmm. Of course, brought it with him. Remember he got it at the end of the part yeah, five? Yeah, I remember, but <laughs> why is he carrying it around? Because he's, he's an asshole. And then we get our James Bond opening, <laughs> where Jason is walking and then turns to the <laughs> fucking camera. It's one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen in my fucking life. What did they think they were doing? Like, who sat there and was like, let's go Bond with this That's intro? That's why I don't understand. Again, I get that like he's back. Yeah. So maybe you're like... Uh, Kind of jazz. I don't understand how anyone can like just take time out of their day and willingly put this on. <laughs> if you put it on in the background of like a party, fine. It's a Jason movie. Yeah. He's walking around a lot. It's dark. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah, atmospheric. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it sucks. Yeah. Um, also, the first one that ditched the giant block letters at the beginning. 
Yeah, and did you see this guy that made this said he wanted to emulate a Universal Monsters movie? I didn't. <laughs> That's, well, he did. You just gave me a fucking headache just by that one <laughs> fucking thought. You, you, not only did you not, it's not even remotely close to what you're. What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> these guys, these guys that directed these movies just say shit. I oh, agree. he's a dead eye. No, he's not. I agree. You're, what are you, fucking idiot? <laughs> like, it's just after the fact, after they've like watched it a million times, they're like, wow, this is a I got a pile of shit. Come up with something. <laughs> yeah. I, I need to have some, I need to have some fucking answers when people ask me about this. Um, Man, whatever. Uh, everyone thinks Tommy's nuts because he is. Dude, Tommy walks into a police station, it literally just opens the door, and the cop <laughs> draws his gun on him. He's like, Tommy, you fucking crazy idiot. Imagine, imagine being in a sheriff's station and pulling your gun just because somebody walked in. I'm not that surprised. Jason, well, two kids are driving to a camp. Mm-hmm. They meet Jason. They're the first ones to see it. And we're starting to get a little meta here. Uh, the girl in the front seat says, I've seen enough horror movies to know that any weirdo in a mask is never friendly. Yep. Well, she's right. <laughs> but Jason is standing there like the royal fucking guard, not moving. <laughs> he has such a penchant for theatrics. He's like the most theatrical fucking guy, even in death. Like, he's just standing there. Wouldn't you just murder him? Yeah. And that's what I was trying to say before. Climbing on her fucking beds. Climbing on her boats. Pops her tire. Busts the headlight. The guy's like, hey. Pulls a gun on him. Uh, it's like a, the, the tiniest twenty two caliber you could ever find. Wouldn't damage anybody. <laughs> uh, he spears the boyfriend um, with the great. It's the great from the beginning of the movie. But he leaves the girl alive. Or so you think. She's crawling. And then Jason's gone. Yeah. But, the, you know, theatrical Jason. He's actually gone around her. Which she didn't know that a man is threatening your life and has just murdered your boyfriend. He's you, big. You're going to know where the fuck he is. Yes. <laughs> Especially someone of that size and looking what he looks like. He probably stinks. And then he's right over her. Yeah. <laughs> and fucking kills her. <laughs> Jason's a tricky guy, man. <laughs> he's a real tricky guy. <sighs> well, now we get a paintball scene. We also get Crazy Ralph. Oh, that, that's the guy who's like, you think I'm a fart head? <laughs> I hate this guy. He's like, why are people digging up Jason? Well, because you have a grave Mark Jason Voorhees. <laughs> and you buried it like an inch under the ground. <laughs> and when people dig it up, you don't tell the police. <laughs> All <laughs> rats. Like, oh, no, no one done buried Jason. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, the paintballers. We get the paintballers. Um, this movie was also heavily edited, they say. Because hmm. this was supposed to be a triple decapitation, and you don't see any of it. <laughs> oh, shucks. Uh, first guy gets thrown headfirst into a stick, then his arm gets ripped clean off. Well, you know the guy that plays uh, Tommy is the guy from uh, Return of the Living Dead? Yes. Freddy? Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, the, the, uh, at this point, I'm just done with Tommy, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I fucking hate him. I can't fucking stand the fucking guy. I, I barely stood him in the last one. And this one, it's just like, why, why are you even here, Tommy? We don't need you anymore. We don't need your services anymore, Tommy. Just get the fuck, get the fuck out of here. Well, new crazy Ralph is wandering around the woods drunk. He gets killed by Jason. And so does a couple. It is midnight in the woods of Camp Crystal Lake. Camp Crystal Lake looks like a fucking dump. It should be destroyed. Oh, yeah. That's what I was going to ask. What would a town do if people were just murdered on it year after year after year? Think about what they do at the sites of yeah. mass shootings now. They knock it down to the ground. That's what it would be, right? Rebuild somewhere else. I feel like they would fucking fill in it the fucking lake. Be, it, it, they would. It, they, they would 100% just pour concrete into it. Yeah. They would just pave like, over it. Enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It keeps ha- every fucking year it happens. <laughs> Why would anyone even live in that town? You think that's what happened in Dudley Town? Uh, oh. We should talk about Dudley Town sometime. We should sometime. go to Dudley Town sometime. Uh, can you get there? 
Huh? <laughs> I think it's heavily guarded. Oh, is it? Yeah. They arrest you on site. Really? Mm-hmm. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Such a waste of resources for <laughs> assholes like us. <laughs> Um, well, this cokehead couple in the woods, they're ugly, ugly dude, beautiful woman. Uh, they're out in the woods and he's proposing to her in the fucking woods of Camp Crystal Lake. Last place you'd ever be. Uh, and they get, they, they get fucking got, they get fucking got, uh, I don't even know the characters in this one. <laughs> Cause there's a couple, we're going to be introduced to a couple right now that's in an RV. I don't know if they were like. Were they characters or were they just throwaways? I mean, they were throwaways because they die right now. Yeah, no. But <laughs> yeah, they're throwaways. There were so many of them. At some points, I was like, should, should I care about these people? No, well, I cared about no one in this movie. Did this movie has Jason breaking a glass bottle and then stabbing them with it? Yeah, he stabs Crazy Ralph with it. Yeah. That's Crazy Ralph's death, which I loved. Breaks a pint, shoves it in his throat. I mean, he's just... Like, Wait, what why? do you think about the RV scene? So we have a couple kids in RVs. They're driving nuts. Jason is somehow in the bathroom of the RV, by the way. <laughs> he kills the girl by shoving her face through the side of the RV. And yeah. you see the outside and it makes her face marks. On. Yes. <laughs> Very Nightmare on Elm Street-esque. It is. Fucking obnoxious. And then he kills the fucking guy by uh, stabbing him in the head. And the RV careens off the yep. road, flips, crash landing, blows up, engine catches on fire, and then Jason appears on top of it. Are you asking me what I think about yeah. this scene? I fucking hate it. I loved it. Why? Because Jason's just standing on top like a bad Why is that cool? I don't know, man. What is... Well, you like the first four What's movies, your right? least favorite scene in the remake? Think about what you're saying. When he stands on top of the fucking house. The only reason I brought that up is because I've said it <laughs> to a few fans that have emailed me about this series and mentioned, like, the remake. And I've been like, mark my words. <laughs> Joe will discuss Jason standing on the roof of the house. <laughs> I hate it. I, I, for a decade, Joe has complained <laughs> about Jason standing on the roof of the house. <laughs> I've heard for 10 years about how much he fucking hates that. <laughs> Why is he on a roof? <laughs> it cracks me up. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's, but now he's on top of an RV. It's very similar. And, and the point I'm trying to make is he, why do people like this? He, the, the first four movies, he doesn't have to survive RV crashes and like emerge through the fire and do all this bullshit. <laughs> I'm just he walks around and kills people. Oh, boy. Um, well, meanwhile, Tommy's researching the occult. <laughs> Part six. Part six fucking sucks. <laughs> it's so fucking unbelievably stupid. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. The right. Like, who wrote Tommy that? brought him to life and then is like, oh, sh Tommy, researching the occult, you're not a witch or anything. The electricity just somehow brought dust to life. So it is a universal movie. Doesn't that happen to Frankenstein? So is that this guy's stretch? That's this <laughs> guy's to be. stretch. Has to this be. guy's like it's a universal. It's a modern movie day Frankenstein. Like, use electricity to bring a dead person. <laughs> it has to be. Uh, a couple more murders happen. <laughs> Tommy's got a bunch of fucking shit ideas, and every time the cops arrest him. Yeah. He keeps going to jail, and the girl, the, the the police officer's daughter, keeps letting her loose. I think this girl's the worst actor in the series. She's pretty Straight fucking up. bad. What is her name? Megan in this? Yeah. Megan Garris. Daughter of Mike Gareth, Garris, the sheriff. Uh, Mike Garris, as a sheriff. Um, Mick Garris? Mike Garris? Mike Garris. I mean, it's just Sheriff Garris. Sheriff Garris. He, he's a fucking useless fuck, man. I mean, he, he's such a terrible fucking sheriff. It's unbelievable. But every time he locks him he's up. Very bad. Every time he locks him up, his fucking daughter. Wouldn't the other cops finally be like, hey, sheriff, your daughter's a fucking asshole. And she is, dude. <laughs> She's so disrespectful to her dad. Ruins his job. Um. Jason is just fucking destroying people at camp during this, though, while we have to watch. This movie was super fucking boring because 
there was so much about Tommy and the sheriff. I just, it's just Tommy being like, you got to listen to me. Jason's alive. And the sheriff being like, you, you say that one more yeah, time. I'm going to fucking shoot you in the head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's very, very threatening. He's so, he's literally just keeps telling Tommy he's going to murder him. And like, I never really pick apart dialogue in horror movies. Yeah. But it's just like the lines I've already said are abysmal. And there's one where the two cops are driving and one cop's like, huh, pick the wrong ear. <laughs> what does he say? He picked the right day to pull this kind of shit. Happy Friday the 13th. Like, ugh. Ugh. It's really bad. Um, so finally the cops go to check on the camp. Finally. After everyone's like, can you please go check on the camp? They're like, fine. Everyone's dead. <laughs> Except Jason in a room full of like <laughs> underage campers who he's like pulling a Monsters, Inc. with. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> he's like not killing them. He just got them cornered. And yeah. they're all like, Aah! And he's just like looking at them like, what, what are these things? <laughs> um, and then Jason starts throwing martial art darts, which I don't know where he got those from. They're like the ones with the fucking tassels at the end. Yeah, I know. But cop dad shows up. Old Sheriff Garris. He starts fighting Jason. The bullets are literally doing nothing. Mm-hmm. And then Jason takes him and snaps him in half. <laughs> Might be one of my favorite kills ever, but only because the body looks so uh, abnormal. Yes. You've never seen a body bent like that, and it's just really satisfying to look. It's really satisfying to look at. He's like bent at the waist. Oh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> well, Tommy has come up with a great idea. To kill Jason. Now, you might argue it actually is great because it stops him. It's the worst idea I've ever s- fucking seen in my life. He's going to wrap a chain around Jason's neck. Mm-hmm. And the other end of the chain is going to be wrapped around a rock. <laughs> <laughs> the old uh, Looney Tunes. <laughs> How you think you're going to pull this off? I mean, I know you're going to argue he did pull it off. Shut the fuck up. It, this would never go down this way ever in a million fucking years. Would this ever fucking work? Oh, God damn it. That's, I mean, it's even more stupid to say it out loud. Like, you're oh. watching it and you're like, this is stupid. But when you when like, when like you just verbalized it, it's just like, that was honestly so dumb. You wrapped a chain like, around a rock. Process it. <laughs> um, it's even worse, though, because Jason's attacking the kids <laughs> in the camp. And then Tommy's like, hey, come over here. And then Jason's like, huh? And then turns his attention to Tommy, who he knows has something up. Tommy's in the middle of the lake, and he's like, come get me. (laughs) Jason, you've done this seven fucking times. Well, okay, it's not seven, six, five. Five times. Four. It wasn't in part five. One in five he's out of. This is part six. Oh, sorry. So, yeah, four times you've done this. So three times. Whatever. (laughs) It doesn't matter. It's fucking you. You've known enough to know people are trying to kill you. <laughs> Everyone's trying to end you. Go kill the kids first. I don't even know what your purpose is. Why are you even around? Why is he around? What, is he <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. It's because he was alive all those years and no one. <laughs> he, he was alive in that grave. He was sleeping. <laughs> J- J- well, luckily, Jason's very vindictive, drops everything to go fuck up Tommy. Um, but he's easily distracted by uh, people yelling at him because Megan is like, Tommy, no. And then Jason, halfway to Tommy, is like, huh? <laughs> and then turns around to get Megan. Most useless scenes I've ever seen in my life. She's a fucking dog. <sighs> so he's, he's a dog. Uh, well, eventually Jason uh, finally goes after Tommy. The 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 water gets lit on fire. I, I don't know. Who cares? Why why he would do that? I don't know. That's Tommy's idea. Tommy starts pouring gas everywhere and lights it on fire. Jason's underwater. Doesn't fucking matter. And he's dead. (laughs) And you know you can't kill him. Whatever. So anyway, Jason belly flops on the boat, breaking it in half. (laughs) And then gets sunk by a rock. Also, he's Jason's still like pretty normal size. Also, the the lake is not that deep. <laughs> There's a little dry, <laughs> a drought. They're so close to land. 
Like we talked about Lake Placid, like how big are lakes? You know what I mean? Yeah. And they, I guess they can be pretty deep. I guess they can be pretty large. Camp Crystal Lake doesn't strike me as a large one. Sure. Uh, but let's say it is. They're about 15 feet away <laughs> from shore. Jason could probably touch the ground with his toes. Um, so anyway, Tommy, uh, Tommy gets him. But he brings Tommy down and strangles him underwater. <laughs> um, well, luckily he's uh, revived. Luckily he is revived. <laughs> Tommy's alive, thank God. Um, and the girl goes out to get Tommy, and Jason grabs her. Yes. <laughs> what exactly is your plan here, guys? <laughs> like, what the fuck is the plan? She ends up turning on a boat motor. I'm not entirely sure what it does to a guy that's already dead and can't be killed, but apparently it chops him up enough that uh, he's dead. <laughs> And I was at the bottom of the uh, the lake. Yeah, and unfortunately, Tommy lives, and, uh, and so is Jason. And also, unfortunately, Jason's eye opens at the end. <laughs> so is Jason. So there you have it. Everyone lives. No resolution, no conclusion to the end of this movie. Uh, Everyone's fine and well, and alive and well. The amount of kills in this movie eighteen doesn't include Tommy and Jason both dying, but being <laughs> oh, there's an infinite number of Jason. Being alive, just uh, this is fucking exhausting. Well, that's it, guys. That's the three movies for this episode of Serial Killer. What do you think? What What do you think? Like, what? Where do we stand with this series right now? First three, we loved it. Yep. Four, like, we like a lot. Five, it's okay. Which is surprising because I think I, I think during five, I was like, oh great. I think you said this I, earlier. I agree, hundred percent. You said this earlier. I was right? like, I was like, this is my least watched one. I don't enjoy this. Yeah. Pretty stupid. I'm ready to get the six. And then six and happens. Six happens, and you're like, I, five was great. <laughs> five was solid, man. I mean, Jason's dead. Move on. Uh, well, six said, you know what? Go fuck yourselves. And I hated six. I hated the dialogue. And then I watched seven. <laughs> <laughs> and then it all fell apart. Well, next week we are doing seven. Eight and nine, which is uh, whatever. Uh, what is seven technically called? The new blood. <laughs> Fucking nightmare. And then <laughs> eight is Manhattan. Yes. Equally a nightmare. Next week is the fucking rails fly off. Yes. Yes. No one's at the helm. Nope. They're just doing whatever they feel like. And seven, like usually I like talking about movies like these. Fan fiction is better than all of these. Seven is so... Seven's Paul's favorite. That can't be true. Yeah, I thought you used to just harass him. Nope. I, I might call him just to confirm. Get him on the phone. All right. Do you want to just start a seven? Yeah. All right. Guys, thank you all for listening. Thank you for the support. Dude, everyone loves fucking Serial Killer. I don't know why. Probably because <laughs> we're exhausted. Probably <laughs> Recording this next episode. <laughs> It's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, but thank you all for your support. It was crazy. People were so pumped yeah, that it's returned. Real. It's yep. crazy. Um, and uh, we'll see you next week. So whatever. Oh, no. Uh, uh, Facebook.com slash I hate horror. We've got live shows. Uh, check out I hate horror.com. There's some information there on events. If there's not actually. Go to I hate, <laughs> go to I hate horror.com slash events. I think just go to my Instagram at I hate horror. Just ask one of those. Just <laughs> you all you just message us anyway. I, on my Instagram, I have a highlight on my Instagram page with all the dates. It's also on our Facebook page. So check those out. Um, Orlando, the 21st and um, October 6th, Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, and that's it. Um, what's your Snapchat or fucking Instagram name? Uh, I barely use Snapchat now. I, I, I'm just on Instagram. Honestly, don't follow me. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I'm Boogadish 1985 and Horror Show Joe. I feel the same way, man. Social media is such a joke. And it, it cracks me up when I watch see some of these other podcasts and shit. Like, they want it to work so bad for them. New post. Check my Instagram. No one's checking it. Because <laughs> they, they know you're going to put it in the fucking stories anyway. <laughs> Hashtags and stuff. It's fucking weird. 
And guess what? All of your followers are fake, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It does not. All of your numbers are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we should end this before I say anything yeah. else incriminating. All right. Uh, so for Joe, this is Sean. Stay weird. Thanks. Whatever. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. <laughs> That's it guys, that's it guys. That's it, guys. That's it, guys.